forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. All right, tonight our temperatures uh, hovering near the freezing mark in Champaign, surrounding areas like Danville, 36, 34, Mattoon, 39 in Decatur. We have had some light winds out there. Uh, those winds were a lot stronger earlier, but now just around 5 to maybe 10 miles an hour at best. Clear skies, lots of sunshine that we had on your Wednesday. We will carry that into your Thursday. Your Thursday is looking really nice. There are some changes coming our way for next week. Let's get the kids out the door at the bus stop. 28, a little chilly to start off with, but a nice warm 47 degrees on the way home. Coming back, we're going to talk about the big drop in those temperatures and when it arrives coming up. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. What we're trying to do is expose them to new new adventures in life. Police say one teenager is a person of interest in recent shootings, and one group says they're trying to help teens like him before it's too late. Plus, a woman's accused of driving her Jeep off a bridge and onto the interstate, where authorities say she's expected to land next. We didn't want to quit on our recipes. A fire brought their business to the ground earlier this year, but soon they'll be back up and running again. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Sad. It's, uh, it's, it's heartbreaking. People who work to mentor young boys in Champaign were troubled to hear a teenager was arrested for having a gun illegally. Police believe he's connected to gun violence in the city. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jessica Coons. The 16-year-old is being charged with unlawful use of a weapon. Police arrested him near Garden Hills and Holly Hill Drive. They say he had a sawed-off shotgun in the home. WCI 3's Jennifer Jensen is in our newsroom tonight. So, Jennifer, what else do we know? Jessica, police are investigating him as a person of interest in recent Champaign shootings, but no charges have been filed. However, officials say he's not suspected in the most recent shooting of a 10-year-old boy who was hit by a bullet in his home. But this is the reason people in Champaign have created programs to help mentor young people to turn away from violence. It's been a year filled with gun violence in Champaign. We're having more of our gun violence happening. The, it's like our victims are getting younger and younger, um, and, and it's just, it's tragic. There have been more than 90 shootings so far, compared to 76 total from last year. Most recently, a 16-year-old boy was arrested for illegally having a sawed-off shotgun and believed by police to be connected to multiple shootings. I just let you know how far um, our community has failed. Um, I believe it, we need more adults out here to help with the kids. It was disheartening for Carlos Harvey to hear about what the teenager is accused of. Harvey is a life coach for a program called Boys to Men. They mentor young boys from 6th to 12th grade. We're trying to um, provide them with resources that's in the community that they don't absolutely don't, I mean, don't know too much about. The case of the 16-year-old is exactly what Boys to Men is trying to prevent. Just trying to expose them to, to new and bigger and better things in life so that they can understand that it's, it's, it's more to life than just the violence and, and all the, the things that, that's, that's hurting our community. Their goal is to steer them away from a life of violence and help them find more fulfilling opportunities. We've been on several trips. We've been to several businesses in the community. Just showing them something different behind the scenes and what it looks like to, to have a job and, and to do something productive in it. Police would not say which specific shootings they think the 16-year-old was involved in. Tomorrow night, the Champaign-Urbana Area Project is having a meeting to talk about the recent violence. That starts at 6 at King's School. In the newsroom, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA3, your local news leader. All right, Jennifer, thank you. We have an update tonight on that 10-year-old who was shot Sunday night in Champaign. He's out of surgery and improving. His family says he was shot once in his chest while he was in his bedroom. His mother says he was able to sit up today and is now breathing on his own. Danville police are investigating two shootings that happened overnight. Police say a 31-year-old man was shot in the leg near North Walnut and West Voorhees last night. A few hours later, a 29-year-old man was shot at by someone in a car near Fairchild and Harmon. Now city leaders and police are talking about installing surveillance cameras in high crime areas. They're considering using a $75,000 grant given to the police department to buy and install them. 
Some people in Danville say they're afraid to let kids play outside after recent shootings. The principal at Schlarman Academy says because of the violence, they're keeping kids inside for recess. That's something he hasn't done since he got started in the position two years ago. But he hopes it will keep students safe. We will do everything imaginable to keep the kids safe and secure. Um, I don't want to make this seem like a uh, prison by any point means, but I do want it, the students to be feel secure in their educational environment. The principal at Schlarman says he plans to speak to authorities before allowing the kids to be outside again. New for you tonight, a Decatur man is accused of drunk driving and hurting two officers who tried to stop him. 39-year-old Ryan Jacobs was arrested for those reasons and for speeding late Sunday night. But our news partners at the Herald and Review report the Macon County Sheriff's Office filed a sworn affidavit stating what happened while Jacobs was being arrested. That says Jacobs used his head to hit one of the deputies in the mouth and the other deputy's hands bled as Jacobs resisted being handcuffed. We have new details on a woman who police say launched her Jeep off an unfinished bridge in Champaign. Officials say she's going to trial in February. 28-year-old Asia Marshall is charged with felony DUI. In court today, a state trooper described how he found her car and the extensive injuries to her passengers. In September, police say she drove the Jeep through a closed construction zone on Bradley Avenue, went airborne and landed right next to 57, stopped only by that concrete barrier. Her blood alcohol level was almost three times the legal limit. Here's a follow-up from 6 o'clock. Leaders in Savoy unanimously voted tonight to prohibit the sale of recreational marijuana. The board approved a sales tax in September, but held off on deciding whether to allow sales. A property owner approached them last week saying they wanted to open a retail dispensary in the village with another company. Marijuana cultivation centers are preparing for the January 1st legalization date. The Ascend Illinois Center in Barrie had to expand to meet its projections. It added nearly 100 employees since January and nearly doubled its growing capacity. Owners still don't know what exactly to expect when sales become legal. That's the $100,000 question, right? I, that, that's almost impossible for us to predict. Uh, but what we're doing is we're gearing up for a high density grow uh, to support, bo support both the uh, medical and recreational market. Cultivation centers are required to follow strict state guidelines. In fact, the state constantly monitors the facility through a direct camera feed to make sure it's following the rules. Thousands of people in Illinois could soon be struggling to find food. Today, the Trump administration announced a new rule to the Federal Food Stamp Program, or SNAP. The changes are for people without disabilities who have no dependents. They'll now have to work a minimum 20 hours a week. Some organizations, like the Eastern Illinois Food Bank, are already preparing for the ripple effect that could have. Oh, it's going to really impact the work that we do. We struggle to get enough food anyway. And if those people now have to rely on resources that we have, we're going to have to work even harder. SNAP sets time limits on how long people can receive help. It's usually three months if the person is not working or going to school, but that rule was able to be waived in counties where unemployment rates are at 2.5% or lo lower. The new rule raised that percentage to 6 New at 10, the Urbana Park District is planning on building a new indoor health and wellness center. The concept includes basketball courts, fitness rooms, and a playground to be built at Prairie Park. Tonight, they invited the public to give their input on the design and what they want inside. Recreation as a whole is beneficial to the community and, and socially, physically, and emotionally. And there's really not a good place in Urbana. Uh, specifically through you know our park district as well to provide you know health and wellness opportunities for people. This would cost between six and eight million dollars. The park district refinanced some bonds to pay for it and they're applying for a state grant of two and a half million dollars. If they get that grant they hope to break ground in 2021. Some of the state's treasures were at risk of being sold. Why Lincoln's artifacts will get to stay where they are. Plus big plans for the future for some brewery owners. The back bar will be here. The bar will be coming along this way. They're rebuilding after their first dream went up in smoke. And the start of the year wasn't looking good for one Illinois volleyball player. How that's changed going into the NCAA tournament.